Welcome to Industrial Problem Solving. My name is Dave Roysom. I am super excited to continue our new mini-series on web inspection. Here we will show how easy it is to build a great inspection station on your machine or in your test lab. I know your time is precious, so let's get started. The main reason to add a light booth is to improve your best instrument to study your web's formation and flatness. That is, your eyes. There really is no reason not to add a light booth because they are simple to build and don't cost much. All we have to do is to replace uneven ambient point light with uniform soft light. However, before we begin to build our inspection station, we need to learn a little bit more about lighting. So, what is the difference between point and soft lighting, and why does it even matter? Point lights have a small spherical area and cast distinct shadows. Common examples include the sun and light bulbs. Soft light, on the other hand, has a large spherical area and is relatively uniform. An example is the sun on a cloudy day, where the clouds act as a diffuser. Photographers and inspectors alike love soft lighting. An artificial light such as a light bulb can be made a bit softer with a diffuser such as a lampshade. It can be made much softer with what photographers call a soft box, such as shown here. So, why the big deal? Well, it's all about uniformity. It is hard to see non-uniformities in your web if the lighting is non-uniform, such as dappled shade. Another important character of good lighting is its color temperature, which is approximately the peak of the light intensity versus wavelength curve. Lighting color temperature varies from the yellow hue of incandescent lights, which are about 2500 Kelvin, to the bluish hue of most computer screens, which are nearly 8000 Kelvin. The standard for most lighting is what is called daylight balanced at 5500 Kelvin. The reason why this is so important is so that we see colors in a neutral and uniform way. However, unless you have a lot of training, you will not be able to see color casts of lighting or off color of your web because our brains compensate for that. If we see what might be a white shirt, our brains process the image to make it appear white, even if it is not actually white due to poor laundry or poor lighting. Lastly, we should talk about brightness. The brightness on the web should be somewhat higher than the highest ambient brightness around the machine. The reason is simple and has to do with the speed of light adaptation. The pupils in your eyes can narrow within seconds when exposed to bright light, but take many minutes to dilate when in dim light. So, let me demonstrate the differences between two common light bulbs. The first is the old-fashioned incandescent lamp. The second is an LED lamp. They are both of similar brightness, but the LED has twice the color temperature of the incandescent. However, unless these lights are side by side, you may not notice the difference in color and probably cannot even then notice the similarity of their brightness. This is why it is good to have your lighting set up by a photographer or other lighting expert. So, let's start designing our inspection station. 
the first thing we need to do is to find a position that is most comfortable for an operator to work in, whether seated or standing. Ergonomically, the best direction to look is straight ahead or slightly down. So, now let's add our lovely, soft, controlled, and color balanced lighting. In this case, we will add three light sources, though you may wish to have slightly more or less depending on the application. The overhead light is most often the most useful for inspecting most defects such as contamination, holes, or off color. Just take sure to make sure that the reflection angle does not strike the operator's eyes, otherwise the visual image will be what photographers call blown out. Next, let's add side lighting, which might be most useful to inspect bagginess and other web flatness issues, especially if the operator views the web edge on instead of straight on. Sometimes the bagginess is best inspected with a light oriented along the web path and in the machine direction, and we will cover that technique in the next clip. Finally, we will add backlighting, which can be most useful to inspect formation as well as for holes. Of course, each light will be independently controlled. Of course, you are not limited to three light sources. Some of you may wish to add a strobe light to check for periodic defects as just one example. As we've stated several times and quite emphatically, controlled lighting means replacing ambient point source lighting with soft inspection lights. It would be a shame to put this effort into an inspection station and then have the results totally spoiled by shadows coming from overhead lights. Fortunately, this is quite simple to manage. All we need to do is to block the ceiling lights from reaching the inspection station. Of course, other lights, and even the inspection lights themselves, may need to be baffled with light shields to get the best performance from our eyes. While shields are easy to add, you may need a lighting expert or photographer to help guide you, as most of us are not trained to recognize uneven lighting. So, here is our finished on-machine inspection booth. It was simple because it only required three lights and three shields and very little time or expense. This might even pay for itself by avoiding but a single customer return. What we have outlined in this clip is one example of a dedicated on-machine inspection station. There are many other geometries that also could be used, such as incorporating it into a splice table as we showed in the last clip. Finally, these principles are easy to modify for a test lab as well, though we may need to do a bunch more shielding there than in our machine. Thank you so very much for joining me in this problem solving and problem preventing series that is based on web and roll inspection. In this clip, we learned how easy it is to set up a great inspection station in your machine. In case you don't have something like this in your machine or in your customer's machine or in your supplier's machine, in the next clip, we will show you how to make do with almost nothing more than a floor, a broom, and a flashlight. If you found anything interesting or useful here, please like and share. Also, please consider supporting the work of this channel using the Patreon link below. 
Patreons are given a special thank you gift ranging from email help to a signed copy of my latest book, the must-have 500-page web handling handbook. See you next time.